Send me a goddamn problem if I don't get my coffee. <laughs> I just thought an idea. You could you could tuft those seventies uh, uh, toilet seat covers <laughs> and uh, like the heater yes. part for that. That's a video. Ew. I can Ew. see the thumbnail already. Mm, cozy and warm. Take, take <laughs> you yeah. back to Scarborough. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh. Oh, that's, oh, that's so bad. Do you want to refresh? Yeah, tough... Sorry. You can tuft the rug with the, 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 the pre-yellow stains on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Nice. Do you want to go and fill that gin and tonic up, um, Bavard? The problem is I don't have any tonic water left. So oh, straight gin, then. The only gin. Yeah. <laughs> Did you need him drunker? <laughs> he, doesn't seem any, he doesn't seem drunk. He's got it together. Yeah. I need, Just I need barely. more than one cup. <laughs> when you measure your booze in cups, <laughs> that's not, not good, when you I mi- think. Not when you're mixing it with tonic. I mean, if he just has one cup of gin, he's probably going to be well on his way. Do it. That, that being said, I don't, I don't need to go far. <laughs> <laughs> For the, the, the king's inch. Oh, nice. Oh, that was in your knife-making video, wasn't it? Or oh, shot at some point. Yeah, yes. I remember seeing uh, it somewhere, but yeah. not where. God, I've got a memory for stupid To be things. fair, I, on, I only buy whiskey for the bottles. I just aesthetically... This one looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> you, might, you might want to buy one of these, then. All right, and then Glenn is fiddling with something inside the picture. There you go. A bottle of bells in a bell-shaped bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. It looks like a bell, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> Am I the only one who doesn't live in a booze cabinet? <laughs> <laughs> I keep it in here, KJ, so I don't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Seems a shame to drink my uh, 1990 bottle of bells in the bells bottle. <laughs> so it's going to be served at your funeral then? Oh, yeah, better drink it. Good point. (laughs) (laughs) Wouldn't want anybody else to enjoy it. (laughs) I actually did buy a bottle of whiskey every time I went abroad. And then I ended up with a lot of bottles. And then I think it's... um, I I don't know how to explain the... (laughs) Like the the linear relationship there, but... um, uh, I know someone who has a fairly extensive collection of wine bottles, and then he started thinking, if I have one bottle of wine every night for the rest of my life, given that I'll live until I'm like a hundred, I would still only be halfway. So, <laughs> no, I better start uh, giving away for presents and serving when people are over and so on. And I had a realization with the whiskey as well. I mean... There's no point in collecting it. it. I mean, it's it's made to be drink drunk. Made, yeah. That's a <laughs> that's a good word <laughs> in that context. So yeah. So uh, I popped all my bottles. So uh, well, there was every a, time I buy a new one as well, I I do have to have a taste. And there's a guy over here not, bought his uh, son a bottle um, for his birthday. You know, from the day he was born of um, this particular new release or limited cask whiskey from a distillery every year. And uh, when his son came of age, he was able to sell that whiskey and buy his first house. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good investment. Yeah. I bought a whiskey several years ago and for some reason... I went in to see what it costs today, and I think it was around eight hundred pounds for a bottle. Yeah. And I, d- I don't think I paid half of that many years ago. So something has happened there, but I think it was less than half anyway. I didn't pay that much for it. 
but that's uh, I've been steadily yeah. drinking from it and yeah. still it's gone up in price but uh, I mean it, it's open and half full so it's, yeah. it's not going to get sold about 10 years ago I was given a bottle of wine at Christmas time um, this, uh, the lady just gave it me out of the collection at home and um, I got home and sort of looked it up before I just gulped it down in my usual manner and it was worth about 400 quid and I thought, <laughs> should I sell this or should I drink it? And I thought, do you know what? I'm never going to buy myself a bottle of wine worth £400. And I drank it. It was lovely. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that's the same with this guy who has a daughter who she's probably 30 by now. But, I mean, when she started going out and having friends over and they started drinking and everything, he said, if you want to drink wine, that's perfectly fine. You can go down and get a bottle. But... This wall, <laughs> leave it. <laughs> and then, of course, if you start looking at the bottles there, you understand why yeah. it's not uh, something you uh, like serve every Friday night <laughs> out with the girls. <laughs> I just feel anything like that would be so wasted on me because I don't have, I don't have the taste buds for it. I mean, I, I, could, I couldn't tell. If something was good or bad, or yeah, it would yeah, it would be so wasted. I mean, I, the few times I've had proper champagne, is but yeah, but this is like a decent sparkling wine, perhaps. Actually, it's nothing, nothing, nothing special. And actually, champagne uh, doesn't do it for me either. To be fair, yeah, I'm not but, too keen on it. Same here. I ha I think I have one red wine and one white wine that I know that I like, and they cost like five quid a bottle, and that's more than enough. So why spend money on something that doesn't really taste any better than that? <laughs> yeah. What is your favorite beverage, KJ? Tea. <laughs> <laughs> do you like the Yorkshire tea? Is that your? Do you like that, or is that a bit strong for you? Or no, no, that's fine. Yeah. Uh... So yeah, some I, I'm mostly an Earl Grey drinker, but yeah, anything proper British tea that's that's real tea for yeah. me, not any fruit flavors or something like that. Warm lemonade, yeah. that's not me. That uh, that the only teas I can drink is the flavor. <laughs> I don't like I don't <laughs> like tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, strong dark tea or strong dark beer. Those are my yeah. Uh, go to drinks, I think. You're a tea man, aren't you, Havard? Yeah, but I also just like the. I mean, now it's the Yorkshire tea, but it's either that or Earl Grey, and of course with milk and everything. And of course, I use honey instead of sugar. Uh, I take a black, I take... blacker than the blackest black <laughs> times infinity. I, I take a liter and a half of black coffee with me to work every day. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what keeps you going. Yeah. <laughs> In my nice big Stanley flask. <laughs> I did that as well. And I tried having a cup of coffee after I got home today, but it's like I took two sips and nope, I had my quota for this day. So <laughs> <laughs> so then you switch to gin and tonic instead. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I have to uh, mix mine up actually, otherwise my eyes get twitchy. I have to put half decaf in mine. <laughs> 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 I get this thing with one of my eyes just constantly just feels like it's twitchy it drives me nuts <laughs> but otherwise you feel fine? yeah, yeah. oh good it's only the eye yeah. <laughs> we're mowing really really fast <laughs> yeah <laughs> is that an age thing that you can't drink as much coffee as you did before or I think a litre and a half of coffee is quite a lot of coffee at any age. Yes, it is. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I mean, that that's the amount of tea I drink. And I mean, coffee is like twice the amount of caffeine as tea. Generally. I, I have two mugs of coffee before I go to work as well. So. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's a well, like goddamn really problem like... if I don't get my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of cups of coffee during the day, but I realized that I have maybe two or three sips, and then 
I work on something and then of course when I come back to the cup it's cold so I just go and swap it out for a new one so I don't think I drink that many full cups of coffee during a day hmm. because I, I notice that when I'm like on the weekends with the, if I put my coffee into the insulated cup then I get myself to drink all of it and then I don't drink as much cups during the day so but I haven't looked into it in more detail than that so it's a real treat Sounds actually going into the workshop with your insulated mug full of coffee you know and still be sipping at it an hour or two later it's lovely yeah that's a lot yeah. better than forgetting it <laughs> yeah. yeah forgetting a normal cup and then it's just cold and yeah but then again uh, if it's if you use the insulated cup, it has a lid, so you get don't get that accumulation of sawdust, which actually <laughs> uh, like uh, fl- enriches the flavor of the coffee. <laughs> but then you can use the propane burner to just give it a quick heat. So it's that, like <laughs> <laughs> works like a charm, <laughs> like a creme brulee, but <laughs> burning sawdust on <laughs> top of your coffee. <laughs> But I actually saw this. You could get like, a, what's it called? It's like a, a propane driven, like the, the mocha master, the, the coffee pot uh, maker. And I really want, I don't, I don't need it, but I really want one that you can bring along with you and make a full pitch of coffee <laughs> just uh, without electricity. Just press a button and it just makes you filtered coffee. That's uh well, you can yeah, get the um, it was kind of pricey. You get the espresso ones, can't you? Where you just put the um, you just add heat, add heat at the bottom, and it all percolates through. We use yeah. them for fishing. I can't remember what they're called. They're nice. That makes a nice coffee. This was a huge full size coffee brewer with like a, a perforated uh, stainless steel cover in the back because there is propane and flames and smoke. <laughs> and I mean, <laughs> of course, you get smoke as well. <laughs> Making it on a campfire, but. It sounds a lot cooler than the Makita battery-driven coffee maker they have. I did look at that one as well. And I mean, the day that you get one with the Bosch logo on it, you can't press the buy button fast enough. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just waiting. So you guys have never tried Bovril? Nope, they never heard it of every it. Day. You use it every day? <laughs> Yeah, at least once a day, maybe even twice. If I had a lot of coffee, then I yeah. use a lot of bog roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you you have one of those fancy Japanese toilets, do you, Glenn? So you don't use it. I get it. We I use the it. shell system. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's a demolition man. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not the sponge on the stick that the yeah. Romans did. Yeah. Oh, God, that's big disgusting. open <laughs> yeah. in this like 20, 40 toilet seats in a row in yeah. the open skies. Yeah, yeah, I've been to Pompeii and see those. <laughs> Bring your stick and yeah. let's meet at noon. <laughs> <laughs> so, should I, should I play uh, Tim Turkworks' description of what Bovril is? Just to clarify things for you. Please do. I think this is the right clip. But Knowing Tim, I don't know if I'm sure it's going to help, but press I, play. I think it's dead accurate. And while you're waiting, we bring you this ad for NordVPN and... <laughs> it's... This is if it. you think of Vegemite and beef gravy mixed together but it's the consistency of Vegemite still, um, but just tastes fantastic. You, you just, it makes you feel more like a bloke when you eat it. You know, sort of like if you have, if you have like a steak and just eat it with your hands. <laughs> and it's, it's just better, isn't it? It's, it's that feeling, but in a jar. There you go. I think that's clarified it, hasn't it? <laughs> I played my son that clip and he said, it's dead right, Dad. I ate a steak with my hands once and I did feel more like a man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess well, the... Bob the, the... is the trademark name of a thick and salty meat extract paste. Yes. 
Mm. It's delicious. <laughs> it's like drinking beef. <laughs> well, I mean, we we have that in Norway as well. It's called uh, bouillon, uh, but it's <laughs> it's more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it, it's more traditionally like in these hard cubes. Yeah, actually, I buy, I actually buy bovril in the hard cubes. It's better. It's uh, it's more manly to drink it in cube form. <laughs> yeah, and of course, in Norway and Sweden, when you use that snooze tobacco that you put up <laughs> under your lip, you could actually put these cubes in as well, and then you could just have this uh, thick, salty, meaty smell, <laughs> like taste all day long. That's not a terrible idea. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> That being said, there was, it's, it probably still is, but there, there was a competition of making your own snooze. And then, of course, you have this traditional, which is a loose powder, which is really messy to use. But you also have these small, we call them hamster diapers. It's this small <laughs> packages. <laughs> and then, of course, you can buy these uh, with the tool of actually making them yourself. And then... You could put whatever you want in there and then just seal off that pouch and put it up your lip. And I mean, maybe you should make a Bovril one. Maybe I should try make a batch and bring along to Maker Central. <laughs> Although I would have a problem explaining it, <laughs> explaining it to, the, to the customs officer if he wants to check my luggage. What is this? <laughs> Neatly packaged, small, uh, yeah. Just smell okay, it. It's enough. obviously beef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's probably just to throw the dogs off the scent. This is probably yeah. drugs. <laughs> Let's lock him up for a few days until he breaks. <laughs> Give one to the dogs. It'll make them feel more manly. <laughs> yeah, Maker Central is fast approaching now. Now we've got it is, stupid it? March out of the way. <laughs> yep. Super yeah. time to go. It's. I see more and more posts of things that's going on, so it's it's going to be really good, I think. Yeah, it it sounds like it's going to be a a more in, interesting event than last year. Yeah, I'm just feeling my anxiety slowly start to creep up. Why? Because I hate traveling. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I am I'm, I'm gonna feel such a relief when I'm actually back home. <laughs> yeah, that too, but when I, when my feet actually are in Birmingham, that then I will feel such like a five hundred pounds off my shoulders, uh, or something like that. I, I don't uh, like and then it'd be... yeah. I don't like traveling but just because of the time it takes, I just find it boring, but Yeah, I do it so seldom so so it's not looking forward to that part, but I'm really looking forward to to actually coming there. Yeah, is your daughter excited, Havard? Oh yes. Yeah. So we are practicing English, so uh, <laughs> she now knows how to order ice cream and <laughs> the important uh, tell her name and yeah, uh, like all the standard phrases. I don't know. Find my name. daddy. <laughs> my daddy is missing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> I'm gonna make her a t-shirt. <laughs> well, my daughter walked around with one of my badges on last time, so <laughs> collecting stickers for me, so I didn't have to talk to anybody. <laughs> you know that this is a social event that you're supposed to talk to people. Yeah, I'm gonna be all right with it this time. <laughs> I would. I would feel kind of awkward just putting my stickers on random stuff. Although I see a lot of makers do that. So I'm thinking I'll just hand all my stickers over to her. And <laughs> whatever you see that you think should need a sticker, yeah. just go wild. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's going to stick them on me, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Yeah, nice pat on the back. <laughs> Stick him on that funny-looking English fella. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I need to order some more stickers. Mine are running a little bit low. Yeah, I have an idea for a sticker idea. 
let's see if it works out. Do we get to know any more at this stage? Uh, not until I've failed miserably. Uh, then I will talk about it. Or <laughs> if I've succeeded, then you will have to see when we get there. Okay. <laughs> so, Fair uh, enough. At the, at the moment, the cat is both alive and dead. So... I was kind of thinking that I'm just going to use the the few stickers that I have and then spend my money on making <laughs> me and my daughter a matching sweater or a t-shirt with a logo or something uh, headquarters specific <laughs> <laughs> just to stand out in the crowd. That'd be nice. You don't have to make one. You can just order one from your shop. Yeah, that's what I meant by yeah. uh, <laughs> making one. It's your shop. It's kind of like you've made it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. made all of it. <laughs> the shop part, and yeah. See, so you brought shops up. Any activity on the shops? No. Um, of course, not advertising your web shop. Nobody's going to stumble over it. So, uh, but I put one of the one of the clocks up on uh, like an online marketplace here in Norway yesterday so there's an ad out there for like 20 bucks or something there there's been a few clicks but no one has bought it yet nice. so it's an experiment i i priced it high then of course if someone is willing to pay that it's fine but <laughs> might have to adjust the, the prices a bit but i think the ad's going to be out for 60 days or something so it's uh we'll see cool. i've seen you added uh the bucket rack and the knife, um, the butter knife as well, uh, since last I I saw the page. Yeah, and uh, I've been playing around in Photoshop as well because they now have that uh, AI background generator. So I've been playing around making various kinds of backgrounds so I don't have to like make a background specifically for that object. And it, it works pretty good but it, not good enough for me wanting to put the pictures up yet but uh oh. need some tweaking did you say bucket rack yeah it's uh <laughs> the holder for the nespresso coffee capsules oh okay it's, it's basically the kickstarter i just uh right put them up there but the small nespresso capsules they they look like miniature buckets so i've been calling it the bucket rack ah, right <laughs> it's yeah. keeping to the maritime scene <laughs> i didn't understand what it was i was looking at before i clicked that so, oh, okay it's the capsules because it, uh, other than that it was really small buckets or a really huge plank that was holding them <laughs> It's, yeah. quite, it's quite niche finding a bucket collector isn't it it's <laughs> what it needs a rack <laughs> to display them <laughs> yeah but you only need the one. <laughs> I mean, if it's niche enough, they're willing to pay up the most. <laughs> I would feel so bad having a customer that you know would buy anything you make because they have an obsession. Oh, now I made a bucket rack in teak. Oh, oh I have to buy it. I have to buy it. I have to buy it. Take my money. I mean, that's the dream. I wouldn't feel bad. Like, I, I, need, I need to have all of his collections that I would just make random stuff. Yeah. Oh, here's a, here's a cup of sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Limited edition. I made only 10 of these. I need them all. <laughs> <laughs> they are numbered and signed. <laughs> we have this sawdust and we've also got this manglet. So the manglet is more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think this podcast we could start selling selling these USB sticks with uh, Turgworks bits on them, like uh... <laughs> Turg sticks. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, Turg sticks. <laughs> Little turds. I mean Turgs. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I envision you want some kind of like a box of chocolates with small. <laughs> He's been small little turds. Tim's been desperately trying to get to four thousand followers this week. He's um, only a couple know of the now. feeling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe we ought to try and see if we can help you as well, Ben. <laughs> what can we do? You can buy a thousand subscribers. I know that's enough. <laughs> I mean, never gave it much thought, but I mean, it's a 
and looking it up on more often. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from the dark side. Yeah. Oh, hopefully your uh, the main video will do it for you, mate. Hopefully, but I went up. I went up to 3,905, and now I'm back to 3,902. So I'm hoping that I got <laughs> enough buffer that it won't fall back again. But of course, when I check after this podcast, you're probably down on 800. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got to admit, I was a little bit disappointed with um, the video I put out at the weekend. I was hoping for a few more views than I've had so far. I only make the videos I want to make. Yeah. Of course, I can. I can buy a go kart and and strap that onto something just to try to please the algorithm. But I mean, I'm guessing it will show in the video if I'm not invested in it. Yeah. So uh, I'll just keep doing my thing and. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Like I say, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to move on to next. After the diddly bow. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep an open mind. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, as long as it has strings. <laughs> <laughs> so what else has strings? Puppet. Uh, la puppet, yeah. <laughs> that's an easy one. Thongs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've seen people make a wooden bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> A wooden thong, right? Mm. Do, yeah, that, uh, uh, I, I can see the clickbaity thumbnail for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a metal a metal thong seems more commonplace, but a wooden one—I don't think I've ever heard of that. No, but then again, it would be impractical because they would burn up rather quickly. Because you are thinking about this blacksmithing thongs, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yes? No? <laughs> oh, that's where the confusion came when we were talking about welding thongs then. Yeah. <laughs> I never did understand why you'd said thong for welding. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to do that for my first welding video. <laughs> welding thongs. <laughs> and then just... Uh... <laughs> show myself and well almost all my glory <laughs> you do that no no don't 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 you do that <laughs> that's definitely a members only thing i think yeah that's what's patron for isn't it yeah or 4000 subscribers you need to celebrate somehow <laughs> Okay, then, what are you going to do to celebrate your 4,000 subscribers? I mean, it's a long time coming, isn't it? Yeah, but the problem is I'm going to celebrate and then I wake up the next day hungover and it's going to be 3,988 <laughs> or something yeah. like that. So. <laughs> I was thinking about a giveaway, um, but I might not couple that to the numbers of subscribers, but I'm, I'm thinking as a part of the... Uh, part of the final uh, Hellcorder video. Um, I do have 25 of these uh, solenoid valves that go very nice in this uh, IKEA glass uh, dome yeah. presenter thingamabob. I made one for myself, uh, which is the first one of the 25 valves. So maybe I should give that away. That would be kind of cool. That's a nice idea. Yeah. You did one with a Kasuin, didn't you? Yeah, I actually yeah. gave that away to my thousand subscriber. So it actually arrived in one piece and was uh, well nice. received. When are you next celebrating, yeah. KJ? What are you on? I was thinking that if I should do something. Because I've, I've talked about milestones back, but I haven't really done anything since... I think it was my when I got 100 subscribers, I did a giveaway. And then I thought and talked about it, but I've just let every milestone just whiz by and not done anything about it. So maybe I should. Did you do a giveaway, did you? Yeah. What did you give away? Uh, some, uh, an arrange. Well, a, a sort of 
care package. Uh, I think the main thing was uh, uh, a folding ruler with with the logo and uh, 100 on it, uh, and then some other bits and pieces, uh, bag tag, and yeah. But that it feels like a long time ago. <laughs> Do you know the person who it went to? Um, only by being uh, internet internet buddies. Yeah. Uh, nice. Never talked or anything like that. But then it's a problem again, and it's going to be more of a problem in Sweden with the postal service. But it's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, even doing giveaways, of course, I, I think I have like five or six people that comments on all my health order videos, and it would be nice to like finish off the video with like, all right, I made small gifts and like parts of the original one and send them out, but I mean, it's. It's crazy expensive to send that in the mail. Yeah, I mean, if it weighs more than a hundred gram, the the price skyrockets. It. But then again, yeah. I'm, uh, I mean, the one dollar a month uh, allowance from YouTube. So uh, give it a year, and I have for the, <laughs> yeah. I have for the postage. So yeah, yeah, you're a rich monetized YouTuber. Don't pretend all this poverty and things are too expensive <laughs> no no i'm i'm just trying to stay humble here but me, of course, me and kj uh, are just doing this for i, the I love. could deliver them personally with my uh, lamborghini parked outside here which <laughs> i have to remove every time i'm filming outside so it doesn't look like i'm uh, well deep in uh, like uh, mr beast money <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice that you have an assistant to move it for you though isn't it yeah of course i mean uh between editing the shorts and uh, the long form videos, uh, of course, the assistant get to do some fun stuff like moving the Lamborghini ten meters or something like that, <laughs> taking some selfies. And yeah, that being said, I mean, if if I ever went to that level, I mean, I couldn't care less for a fancy cars, but. Watching like the the tunneling video for Colin Firth, and actually, I want the underground garage for my DeLorean. <laughs> yeah. Yes, DeLorean. <laughs> I mean, if I won the lottery, there there would be some subtle signs and a DeLorean parked outside as a daily driver. That would be one of them. <laughs> if if, if yeah. I won the lottery or became a rich YouTuber, it would be a, a big workshop somewhere and a, a a beautiful van. To be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> and there are some beautiful vans out there I think <laughs> yeah that's the real taco what about you KJ what are you spending your riches on well not a not a car I feel I, uh, yeah I, I'll probably get uh, analysis paralysis and don't spend it on anything <laughs> <laughs> becoming even a even a tighter <laughs> Because yeah, uh, um, yeah, we would. Of course, my my wife would decide what kind of house and how big it should be, and of course, all the accessories to your house. I would just have the world's biggest workshop. I mean, I remember that scene in I think it was the Fast and the Furious when he said, "If you can't find the right tool in here, you don't belong in a garage." and <laughs> I would be there. I mean, if you can't find a tool to make anything in here, <laughs> yeah. you should just leave. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but when... when the, How big do you go if you have more or less unlimited resources? I recently saw the size workshop I would like a few weeks ago, <laughs> and it's big. <laughs> <laughs> Big enough to wheel a helicopter into, anyway. Not that I want a helicopter, but the, that's the sort of size. You're talking mini. So it's an air, mini an airplane hangar. hangar yeah, yeah. yeah, it should be like in a decent sized hospital. You should have like a kick bike or something to go around, or maybe a golf cart. I mean, if uh, I'm going welding now, it's a it's a ten minutes drive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember in MythBusters. I mean. I live in Norway, so the weather is always a bitch. So, um, I mean, one of these uh, Zeppelin hangars, th that looks appropriate. Then you could uh, 
you can build a potato cannon and you can fire it inside without getting wet. That's, yeah, something like that. <laughs> the problem is that they're so big that you get a microclimate inside and get some, <laughs> it's raining inside. And then you get birds living there and shitting on all the things you do. And... <laughs> Yeah, but I have, I, have, I have a guy for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have Glenn sitting there in the rafters with a BB gun and just killing everything. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> I mean, I just, maybe want to, we, I just want to live a large dream. <laughs> all right. But if you buy a big workshop like that, I mean, you just have enough access space that you can just invite uh, just... Here is free space for every YouTuber that wants or need a space. Just uh, let's hang around, make stuff. <laughs> oh, cool. yeah, so, so you could have uh, like people requesting, yeah, I want to build this. Okay, you can have this many square meters. <laughs> Come do it. Yeah. As much money as I, I I've got, see, like, uh I, I, I see like the last video from Nerdforge. It's like, all right. We don't have enough space here, so we have to go out to the warehouse, and it's barely big enough there. I mean, you could just, if you want to build something, I got the space. And then uh, you have a, like a lounge with a coffee machine and a bar and everything. It's going to be like a, a maker's <laughs> heaven, basically. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the heating bills that would be the hard thing for me. <laughs> I mean, if you have enough YouTubers there, there is going to be people building a rocket stove or two. So I don't think the heat is going to be an issue. <laughs> you're going yeah, to you're gonna have heat exchange heating anyway, aren't you? You know, big pipes stuck under the ground and stuff. Yeah, yeah of it's course. Still expensive. Uh, a nuclear reactor <laughs> running in the shed <laughs> on okay. the backside. I think we're talking here, KJ, where money's not an issue. You can stop being tight now. <laughs> I would still feel like it was wasteful. <laughs> There's still some life left in that sandpaper. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that's me definitely. Oh. Like he's uh, sh- still walking around in a cold uh, workshop in this uh, like uh, sheep lined uh, Carhartt jacket, like uh, all buttoned up. It's a bit nippy today, but uh, <laughs> I'll get around to it once I get a, a workout going. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why I, why I don't want a too big workshop because I couldn't stand not having a heated one, and then it would feel. But that yeah. That being said, of course, it's nice to have enough room but I like the aesthetics of uh, Adam Savage's workshop where it it looks a bit chaotic but he knows where everything is and there is a system behind the craziness but I think I would keep at least the everyday workshop would be something like that where you can get to things with I, I mean relatively quickly and then of course you have an extended part of your workshop where you can do i would probably have an old car standing in a corner jacked up and uh, doing car stuffs and but like a maker workshop i think that would be smaller and more compact just uh, because it's more cozy yeah something like a two-car garage but like can Two hold floors. six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, but uh, but the f- o- open rafters for like two floors, so it's uh, a lot of space. Separate metal workshop. I don't know. You might as I mean, well. Th- th- that's the hard thing with being a maker and not be a woodworker or a metal worker yeah. or something like that. That you want. Uh, you want everything because we were at uh oh what's it called when artists open up their exhibition uh, yeah there's uh, a lot of them so you have a round and you can go and visit different artists 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 i can talk uh at their uh at their the place where they make stuff and they show off their things we had that uh during easter so we went to one place and it was Half of it was a metal cho- shop, and half of it was a barber shop. No way! Felt kind of weird because it was, <laughs> there were there were quite a lot of rockabilly feeling to it. Yeah. So it's a lot of Americana over it. And they had done really cool stuff, 
uh, welding scrap together to make all sorts of cool things. But I felt, oh yeah, if you had just one passion or perhaps two passions, that would be easy to design a workshop for that. But I want all the passions. Yeah. <laughs> so. An old yeah. hotel then. <laughs> <laughs> Each room can be one, one particular hobby. <laughs> yeah. Didn't seem right to say passion for hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it felt kind of weird, didn't it? <laughs> the Passion Hotel. <laughs> yeah, you can come and do whatever you like. Where all yeah. your dreams come true. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I mean, one thing is the size of the shop, but I, I think the economical freedom to not having to work would greatly help you in where you could actually live. And be a maker because I like to build things that go boom, but I can't really do it here because there are neighbors around. But if I didn't have to work, I could, of course, uh, buy a huge estate without any neighbors where you could, uh, I mean, you could have a a rocket launch pad and don't (laughs) really have to think about where the thing drops down again. Here's the question then. Are you stopping in the same country you live in now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's because of family and kids and everything. I don't... Yeah. I mean, we we played with the thought of, uh, like, if we were going to move somewhere, we would really enjoy moving to New Zealand. But, of course, you're going to see your family and friends maybe once a year if you're lucky, and that's, that's a no-go. Yeah. New Zealand, okay. That's... I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, that's why I need the big hangar so I can actually yeah. uh, have an artificial sun indoor. And in, because living in Norway, you, you it's going to be crappy weather, three hundred and fifty-five days a year. So you you need uh, to compensate for that. A couple of sun lamps in the workshops are really nice idea. Actually, I don't get anywhere near as much daylight as I used to. So I used to spend my hobby outside as well. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I see that they actually made a prototype of my workshop now in Las Vegas. With a, <laughs> they they made for a dome like, but of course with big screens all over. So uh, once they've uh, figured out the kinks and so on, I would of course have that lined inside my Zeppelin hangar that I could actually just project blue skies and sun and nice <laughs> everything. Uh, just to record a nice day. And yeah, have yeah. that projected every day. I'll send you some bird song over from here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get really, I get envious of of your videos with uh, <laughs> when you actually have a spring and flowers start <laughs> blooming and that sort of thing. Yeah, it's like I've been looking around the gardens. There's loads of stuff in flower at the moment, and uh, yeah, the birds mm. are singing. Yeah. It was really nice being outside yesterday, just whacking weeds. It's really good. Just actually working up a sweat, doing something that is outside. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Making progress and taming the wild. (laughs) That's what gardening is, isn't it? Fighting nature. Yeah. Yeah. Prep, prepping for the cubic meter of salt I'm having delivered in the fortnight. <laughs> okay. Oh, you think we're having a fight now? Wait until my nuclear weapons arrive. <laughs> Alongside my next project, the Rose Killer. <laughs> okay, before we get down this route again, I think we'll say goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for listening, goodbye. everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I mean, it, it's going to be like this shredder that just shreds everything and then it's going to be a propane burner and it's going to inject diesels. It's going to come out. It's just a black puff of smoke. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>